You're listening to A View from the Cheap Seats Wrestling Podcast. Now, before we really officially begin everything, uh, news broke over the last weekend or so that Jake the Snake Roberts was not doing very well. I first heard this news on PWIinsider.com. It's also been on the Wrestling Observer and several other websites picked it up that he was not feeling very well. And it turns out he actually had pneumonia and it became double pneumonia while he was traveling over to Las Vegas. News is good, though, however. The last I heard is that They've been able to treat it pretty well. The fluids, this is kind of gross, the fluids have moved off to different organs away from his lungs. But everyone that he's been working with, Diamond Dallas Page, Sim Brody, a friend of his in Las Vegas, is saying that he's actually doing a little bit better. I hope for a full recovery. Jake Snake Roberts was one of my absolute favorite wrestlers in the 80s and the 90s. And to see sort of his downfall and now his resurrection up back and to looking great and seemingly feeling great again, sobering up and everything like that is a great tale. I just hope it doesn't end on a very early tragedy. So get well soon, Jake. Rooting for you. Now, on to the main show. As far as I'm concerned, I have no sister. I wish you died in the womb. (laughs) Can someone explain to me, please, how the Bella Twins storyline was the focus of Monday Night Raw? Like the absolute focus of the show. The Bella Twin storylines had more segments than John Cena versus Brock Lesnar 3, the main event at the next pay-per-view. How in the world is that possible? The reason I asked that question, and I know it seems somehow rhetorical, is that because this storyline, as I've mentioned, is not good. It's not well acted, it's definitely not well written, and it's taking up all this time and being extremely annoying when we could have much better things going on. Like, say, wrestling matches. Or even building up to other pay-per-view matches. Anything but this storyline. This has definitely been one of the more big talking points I've seen online a lot of places. Um, I'm a lurker over at the Death Valley Drivers Board's um, I used to actually have a member uh, member of the board, but I think when they changed over, I got deleted. And just been too lazy to re-sign up, so I just like going over there to see what other people think uh, without really adding my two cents to it. But yeah, everyone is in this is in the conclusion that that this week was just terrible in terms of, of of Monday Night Raws. It was like one of the worst ones, and it all points it all points to the Bella Twins storyline. Like that is our biggest complaint so far. I think people have sort of finally gotten over the fact that Daniel Bryan is injured and it's a neck injury and he's going to be out for a long period of time we've sort of we've, we've sort of come to terms you know everyone's like all right we just have to sort of sit and wait uh, and I know a lot of people are kind of annoyed they're not upset but they're annoyed that Dean Ambrose who has been positioning himself as one of the best workers in the company is MIA because he's off apparently filming a movie. I never got that confirmed. I've only ever seen that being talked about online. Uh, most on message boards that he's in a movie. A WWE movie. So he's not going to be the star or maybe he will be. I'm not sure. Those movies are weird. I don't know how they how they do it. They, they literally just seem to pick the, the weirdest uh, scripts and go, hey, let's go make a film. Hey, you look good. We'll put you in it. So we're, we're annoyed that he's gone because his feud with Seth Rollins and his matches were amazing. So we get, you know, the replacement of Roman Reigns versus Seth Rollins, which is not a bad replacement. So you kind of, you have Seth going through the different people of the Shield, uh, trying to take them out. Like, I created you, I'll destroy you, blah, blah, blah. Honestly, it's probably, probably going to be a really good match. Well, maybe on par, par with the Randy Orton, Roman Reigns matches. Because despite the fact I'm not the biggest fan of Randy Orton anymore, they've put on a couple of really good matches, I have to admit. So... Why isn't that the why isn't that being pursued instead of instead of the Bellas? Why is it the Bellas? Like why is was that the focus? You know, Nikki had 
some of the worst stories uh, that kept popping up and going like, and I, I'm doing this, or I've said this, or Bree's done this, and Bree's done that. She's bad. She's, mm, she's bad. And then, like, it's, which is so funny, because the writing was so strange. You kind of felt like, wow, Nikki's gone through some really bad things. Man, Bree, what's wrong? She's lying. Oh, she's lying. Yes, of course, because she's, she's supposed to be the heel. Uh, why is she the heel again? Like, that's the problem. We don't know why this is going on other than sister jealousy. So I was racking my brain, like, all day today. And actually a little bit all day yesterday. Going, where is this coming from? Why is it so prevalent? Why is it shoved right into our faces? And then I go to the Wrestling Observer's website and start hearing things that Something I kind of realized, something I said last time, this is for total divas. This is a storyline they're setting up on the reality show that they now are incorporating into storylines in WWE. And it was brought by the producer of Total Divas. Not anyone inside WWE, someone outside of the creative talent. This is a major, major issue in my mind. This is something that I absolutely do not like. If this is actually true, because I was getting it from the dirt sheets, the Wrestling Observer, so I have no idea if this is actually true or not. But that bothers me because that means there's an outside force that is now dictating a storyline inside of, inside of WWE, which has sort of happened before, but... Not in this sort of sense that for another like another like show I guess would be and something that at least made a little bit of sense. Um, do you remember like back in the day when No Holds Barred was coming out and they brought in Tiny who played Zeus in No Holds Barred to fight Hogan? Okay, that's sort of an outside source dictating things that are going on inside the wrestling, uh, the wrestling industry at least at least for the WWE at the time. But in that strange 80s way it made a little bit of sense you know because it was you know it was promoting the movie i think wwe had uh had money behind no holds barred i don't remember or not so you kind of do that to promote the movie and things like that this is sort of going to go promote a reality tv show that i don't watch i'm not really sure how many people actually do watch it. They say it's one of the highest rated shows on E, but so is the soup. And no offense to the soup, but you know, E doesn't have a lot of quality programming. Um, except for the soup, really oddly enough. So you you just you're just sitting there going, Oh god, why is this the focus? Why is this the focus? And it gets worse. Not only is it the that was the main focus of Raw. They decided, well, we just can't have these two girls fight each other. I know. Let's bring in the Divas title into the picture. And in that moment, I remember cringing, going, no. No, 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 please. Because the Divas title, for the most part, has actually been separate. It feels like a separate entity from the rest of the Divas uh, roster between AJ and Paige. Because it's their storyline is sort of wrestling-based storyline. It's very much, oh, you beat me in a shock, but then I came back and beat you in a shock, and now I'm going to play mind games to try to get back my title. Now I'm going to play mind games to get back my title. Like, like their rivalry, in a sense, of wrestling storyline makes way more sense than what's going on with any other diva at the moment. And one of the things that, is, that, that, that scares me now is that they're like, all right, this is going to be our main focus. This is our main, uh, you know, women's focus. Let's bring in the title. No, no, let's not bring in the title. Let's leave the title alone. Like, let's and let's leave AJ and Paige out of this. Uh, you know, because hey, they're actually, you know, they're, they're working their butts off. You know, to bring prestige to that title. You know, one of the, one of the two like people on that roster that can really bring it in uh, the women's women's division. Nope. Nope, here it comes. So Nikki apparently is going to get uh, a Divas title shot, and this brings out AJ, and this this brings out Bree, and this brings out uh, Paige, and they're all in the ring, and all sort of talking this. And, and the, I don't know if this is this that might be trying to salvage it, 
for all I know, is that maybe they, someone realizes, like, we can't really have these two. We're not getting what we want out of it, and the match is not going to be very good. Let's bring in our two big uh, workers, you know, let's see if they can salvage this. And it, I don't think it's going to salvage anything. It's really going to just bring everyone down, because I don't, like, because the, the biggest fear is that Nikki's going to win the belt. Or Bree's going to win the belt, and Nikki's going to lose her mind. I don't really know, and I'm really trying to figure out this just problem of this storyline. And I can't figure it out. I legit cannot figure this out. It's upsetting is what it is. It's absolutely upsetting. That was the main focus of Raw. Like, that was the absolute main focus. There was almost nothing on Raw that I felt was good. No, I take that back. All right. Damien Sandow still the Miz's uh, st uh, stuntman. All right, so at least someone, maybe someone listened to my show or saw this was like, you know, let's keep this around. This is actually pretty good. So that did make me happy. What also sort of made me happy is seeing Bo Dallas sort of get into a feud finally. Though it's a feud with Jack Swagger. This is one of those weirdly confusing things. Uh, but I just, oh my goodness, if you could just take Bo, oh, and just, just, it's everything about the, the character of Bo Dallas, of the heel who doesn't realize he's a heel, who's who's like who, who's who's trying to help the guys, and he's trying to help everyone, and doing it like the worst possible way, and it's just not connecting in his head. Is one of the best gimmicks in the world. Uh, absolutely love it. I don't know how far he's going to get with Jack Swagger, because Jack Swagger got Uber over when he was going to be you know the American guy to take out Rusev, and then Rusev, you know, beat him like four or five times in a row. So I don't think anyone really cares about Jack Swagger anymore. It's now all about Mark Henry being Mark Henry, the uh, the Olympic uh, American hero. Is anyone else trying to get a weird Rocky IV vibe going on right now? Like, I feel really bad for Henry. Everyone knows what happened to Apollo Creed with Rocky IV. He was very good. He never showed back up for the sequels. Because he died. Spoilers. So I have no, no idea of... And I wish I could talk more about Raw, but I don't really want to talk about a show that was terrible with the storylines. These and these small little gems of magnificence that had them in there. It's just too too much to ask to get a good show again. I mean we had some good shows, but just too too much to ask. Hell, I even read about Vince Russo doing an open letter to Vince McMahon about how terrible Raw was. And that's saying something. That's saying a lot for Vince Russo to just kind of go, Hey, this sucks. And people sort of agree with him. Because Vince, it's Vince Russo. Vince Russo is one of the guys that helped drive WCW into the ground. He's one of the guys that helped drive TNA into the ground. So he's not the best person to listen to in terms of advice. And while he may make some good points, I'm going to say what this is else. That's, that's sort of the, my biggest problem going on. Uh, with Vince Russo, the Bella storylines. Because next week, I believe Jerry Springer is going to be showing up to talk it out with the girls. And I figured out, the, and I think, you know, just me saying that, I think I figured out the problem. Sit down, everyone. I'm about to drop a bomb. We haven't gotten over the Attitude Era. Like, the Attitude Era where the Monday Night Wars, because I was watching the Monday Night Wars on WWE Network where the Attitude Era was what got people into wrestling again. People into WWE, people into WWE. And I think the problem is they want it back. But we have to sort of all come to an agreement. Everyone from fans, uh, from uh, wrestlers, from creative writing teams, everything like that, from owners. The Attitude Era is dead. It was great. It was magnificent. So many great stars and matches and rivals who came from the Attitude Era. It's dead. The audience has changed. We have moved on to other things. Shock jocks don't do it anymore for us. You know, Jerry Springer doesn't do it anymore for us. Hell, reality, characters that sort of are supposed to be set in a certain reality real life doesn't work for a lot of people anymore we have almost come full circle i feel like we should get back 
to the goofiness. Not even the goofiness, just early early wrestling, early WWE, 80s, 90s wrestling, where, you know, you had characters. Well, they've tried to do that with, you know, the Conquistadors. Uh, the Conquistadors? Oh, crap. No, the Matadors, Los Matadoras. Um, <laughs> Conquistadors. Oh, that's some good memories. But no, from, like the Matadors. Um, Rusev is so. Rusev is actually kind of a throwback to the 80s or so, the evil foreigner, you know? Uh, but he has sort of a modern twist because he's, well, I say modern because except they're using Russia. So still we still have the Cold War problem, so maybe that's a bad example, but hopefully people can see what I'm saying. And now with the Bella storyline, that's based in reality and it's going to be on a reality TV show and they're bringing in Jerry Springer, who hasn't been relevant in decades... Well, a decade at least. Now, you know what? Take it back. Two decades. He hasn't been relevant in two decades. They're bringing him back. And to, what, discuss this? To bring, that's not going to drive ratings up. That's not going to get people to watch the show. We're just going to sit there going, we've seen this before. You know, this is old. Give us something new. Give us something fresh. Give us, hell, just give us some wrestling. Just put on a good match. Something. Give us some characters. You got you got some guys in NXT that are dying, dying to show their skills on the big stage. I mean, uh, come on, get Sami Zayn, get something. But no, we are stuck in this fake revival of the Attitude Era. And it, it, it's all, and I, I blame a little bit of Brie Bella for this. The whole, uh, how many times can you say bitch on show? Now they're going, to, oh, I'm going to, Cena's coming like, I'm going to beat Brock's ass. Ooh. Ooh, like ooh, yeah, it was ooh in the '90s. Now it's oh, that's just normal conversation with people. Come on, like we couldn't, we don't need to be this, you know, low common denominator to get viewers in. This is not bringing back good memories. This is making a lot of us roll our eyes. So that's it. We have to. Everyone has to agree. I want all the fans to come and agree with me come together right now and we all have to say the attitude era was great we need to let it go we've moved on we've all moved on a bit give us something a little bit different not completely different but enough to make us go ah yes wrestling something like that something like a Bray Wyatt the shield or Seth Rollins Dean Ambrose Roman Reigns you know, even the Dusts are doing that right now. Very simple storyline. Heel tag team versus face tag team. Keep it simple. You don't have to have all this reality crap now. Reality eras. I hope that just doesn't catch on at all. Well, that's all I have to say about this from my view of the cheap seats. Hope everyone here has enjoyed it. Please stick back again. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed this show. Hopefully, I'm going to have much better news and much better things to talk about come next week. Until next time, everyone, take care.